Right then, ladies and gents, welcome to episode one of how anybody with a digital camera and a 3D printer can design and make their own wide body kit for a car. So uh, in the first episode, I'm going to cover scanning of the car with photogrammetry. In the second episode, I'm going to do the CAD design and printing the first piece. And uh, then as we go on, uh, as quickly as possible, I hope I'm going to cover how we do the whole kit. So uh, buckle up and uh, 3D print my ride. Or buckle up and enjoy the 3D printed ride or something like that. I'm still working on it. Right, so photogrammetry. It's a process that takes multiple still images of an object that are taken from different angles and using software reconstructs them to get a solid model. And so um, what I want to do is create a solid model of this panel um, in order to design a uh, mating piece. Now, uh, a few things that are quite important. The quality of the photos is very important in terms of they need to be sharp and they need to have a good depth of field so that uh, everything in your photo is uh, as sharp as possible. So it doesn't really work with mobile phones, but pretty much any uh, digital SLR will tend to work. Now there's a few things to bear in mind. Ideally, you wouldn't have a zoom lens because zoom lenses create more distortion, but they all come with zoom lenses. The fixed lenses are expensive. So I have a zoom lens so far, it's been okay. Um, then what you need to do to get a decent depth of field, you need to be f8 or wider or, or, or narrower in aperture so the more you squeeze the aperture down the better the depth of field but of course that cuts down light coming into the camera so you end up with quite slow exposures so it needs to be done on the tripod uh, i've only got one tripod and you're sitting on it so i can't exactly show you very easily but uh also because you're uh squeezing the camera down of course light is an issue you want to have the light distributed around the object as well as possible. Uh, I'm far from the ideal setup at this point. So I've got this kind of uh, never throw anything away rig with four lights on it. Uh, for doing a single panel, it's okay. So um, what you really want is very even lighting because anywhere you get a reflection, um, it tends to cause problems and it, it, the, it confuses the software and it, it kind of creates odd spikes or odd holes. So nice, even lighting. Uh, and then in terms of the surface itself, shiny is a problem. So, so these shiny paintwork, I, I covered this all with masking tape. And when we look at the photos, you'll see that's got masking tape on it. Uh, this where it's taken back to the primer uh, is fine. And in fact, this kind of thing is brilliant because this has got quite a lot of uh, surface defects in it, which all become uh, reference points for the software because what the software basically does is looks at each photo and links it to another one by recognizing common sort of reference features. So uh, you've got to prep the surface. Uh, if you've got any, any chrome bright work uh, or the windows, they need to be covered with masking tape or, or paper or something like that. Um, so nice smooth lighting. And then um, you ideally need quite a bit of space around the car because you, you, you want to be free to, to get all the way around it. Now, this is a bit of a problem here because uh, I've got a car there, there's another car there. So really, if I wanted to do the whole car, I would have to take everything out and then I think I would just about be able to get round. Um, you, you've got to bear in mind that, that to get most of the, the car in, in an image, you need to be like four meters away from the side to get like the whole of this wing, you need to be sort of a couple of meters back. Um, and when you look at the photos, you, you might sort of realize, uh, you know, where I sort of struggled with that because things are in the way. So uh, I think the thing to do now is to have a look at the photos. The really important thing with the photos and where it mostly goes wrong is if there's too much of an angle change between two photos, or if there's not enough overlap of the actual subject in the photos, then the computer can't stitch them together. Um, so this is, seems to be quite a common problem people have when the startup can't figure out why it can't work. So a really good thing to do is to take some photos that are no use some photos that are known to work for your first attempt, uh, just so you can be sure that it's not a problem with the software or a problem with the computer configuration that's preventing the thing from processing. Because um, initially I had a struggle on 
both the quality of photos and the setup on one of the bits of software I was using. So uh, I downloaded a set of photos from the net uh, that were known to work. It was like 50 pictures of a rock, um, but I will find a way to make the photos I've taken of this panel available so that uh, uh, you'll be able to test, test everything works if you need to. Now let's have a look at the pictures that I took. Okay, so I'm going to put the photos through a program called 3D Zephyr now. I'd actually acquired 90 images and this demo version will only take 50 images. So because I've run it before, I know some of the photos it wasn't able to match. So I've discarded them and a few others to get down to 50 images. And I'm not actually expecting that it will be able to match all of those, um, but it may be able to. If you take the $150 version of this software, you can process up to 500 photos and, and that would be, be enough for a pretty good sized project. So uh, basically, um, it's just, I've got the photos here. Um, oh. So you see various different views. So uh, workflow, new project. Now there's, like any of these things, there's a load of settings, but um, just taking the default Select all of those. Next. And away it goes. No, it's going to go in a minute. Here we go. So that'll take a few minutes. So basically, the first thing it does is does a sparse point cloud. So that's identifying the kind of points by which it's going to link the photos. And so fairly quickly, you get a message back with how many of the photos it's managed to align and a good idea of whether it's going to work. Then you go to a dense point cloud, um, which is which is really bringing in the, the mesh. That, that's the thing we're really interested in from a design point of view. But then it does another phase, which is to um, apply texture to it, which makes the thing look much, much better, but actually is a little bit misleading because when you get to the textured image, it hides if there's any problems with the mesh where you've had reflections or, or uh, lack of detail that's caused either lumps or holes, uh, it applies the, the texture over the top, suddenly makes it look photorealistic. But um, the, the, the mesh data can still be wrong underneath, so it's just something to bear in mind. Now this is quite interesting in this software because we see here, so it's pretty much 90% uh, loading on CPU, uh, it's also reasonably big on physical memory and also at the beginning it makes a lot of use of the graphics card so you do need a NVIDIA compatible uh, graphics card and I think that excludes uh, this kind of software most of them don't work on Macs at the moment but I th I th Okay, so of those 50 cameras, uh, 50 images, everywhere it says yes, it was able to align them. So in fact, in this case, it was able to align all 50 cameras, which uh, is pretty good actually. Uh, but quite often you would have some uh, nose in there where it, it couldn't match the camera, uh, and usually because of the angle. So this now, let's go for a bit of zoomage. Uh, is the sparse point cloud so you, you should be able to make out almost the more you zoom in the harder it is there's the wheel there here's the panel here um, this is the masking tape section this is the section that's just in primer um, and each of these blue shapes shows you the cameras which it's been able to align so if I can rotate it you can see that's the car and all of these are the 
different positions I was at when I when I took a photo and how it's matched them. So now the next thing is to let it do the dense point cloud. This takes a little bit longer. Okay, and that's been completed. And now, see, it's looking pretty solid. So you can see the uh, effect of this masking tape. It's been quite good. Where you see these funny lines, this is where different photos have had different lighting levels, I think, and it's sort of assigned them. Oh, seems to have had a bit of a twist error there. So then, after that, It has to texture it. Okay, texturing is finished. So now you see uh, there's an improvement there. So it almost looks photo quality, but we have to bear in mind that, for example, here there's probably a defect like a reflection in this um, in this wheel here um, and it's kind of covered it over by by texturing it anyway that can then be exported generate and export the enhanced mesh now before you export it there are a few things you can do in here to do things like make it watertight and also to reduce the detail of it um, and what I think I'll do is I will switch to another version and, and show you the, the other thing is you can add a bounding box to contain it so I've got another uh, file there I can so this is one that I made before so you can see I have put it in this white bounding box. So then I just have got the wing and the wheel. And that is the file which I exported and then imported into my CAD. And we'll have a look at what it looked like when it got in the CAD. Okay, so now I've got that uh, wireframe model loaded into Onshape CAD. Um, you can adjust in some of the other software either in the 3d fz effort or you can import it into uh, mesh handling software like blender to reduce the density of the mesh and i did it a little bit but you can see it's still a uh, very very dense uh, mesh i think that's denser than is needed i don't think it really adds to the accuracy uh, it might even be reducing it um, so when you saw that rendered example on the screen it, it looked really good but actually you, you can see that the shape is not perfect on the individual level. There's, there's kind of some things you can see here that aren't completely smooth. But basically it formed a good enough profile that um, something once I'd scaled it uh, and oriented it, I've been able to go along and do some design work um, using this file. And... This will be the subject of the next video, but uh, just a quick thing. So you see, I, I've, I've been drawing um, the wide body parts and using the intersection between um, the CAD drawn parts and the imported mesh to create a cut. And I'm gonna show how I did that and or the way I have done it, which might not be the best way and it's definitely a subject for discussion. So that'll be something for the next video. Um, so that was using 3D FZF here. I'm, Zephyr, I'm just going to uh, uh, kind of play the video out by showing what the same photos look like in another software called Reality Capture, which I think processes faster and better. Uh, it's overall more expensive than 3D FZF, although um, you can get it on a monthly subscription. So, so it could be quite economical if you just need to use it a couple of times. The problem with that reality capture is the only thing in the free demo mode, the only thing it lets you export 
is a video um, or you can look at the stills on the screen so you, you can't export the mesh so I can't really use it to make a, a really detailed comparison. Um, the photogrammetry in itself is quite a fun little project and I've done a few other examples which I'll also show just uh, took the camera along to the autosport show took a bunch of pictures lighting level wasn't good enough access wasn't good enough they're not brilliant scans by any means but they're a little bit of fun and uh, I'll put some links to where I've kind of got, got the outputs from those as well okay so if you like that please uh, like and subscribe so the work for the second video you can see I've already done the design and I've actually already made the piece the first piece uh, and it fits so that validated the whole process obviously uh, we're a long way from finishing the kit which will be the subject of future videos so um, uh, please uh, uh, enjoy it and leave me any comments about what you thought this probably isn't the best way to film uh, uh, <laughs> a computer screen cheers